I'd rather be putting a burlap sack hose down with hydrochloric acid and beat with bricks. It's a nightmare. I would rather go to the dentist than to write a research paper. I think I'd rather chew glass. Uh, as far as research papers go, I'd rather have my toenails pulled off my feet and be driven through the flames of hell. I would rather jump out of an airplane without a parachute than write a research paper. For many people, writing a research paper is a little like swallowing milk of magnesia. You know it's something you have to do, but you want it to be over with before it begins. Actually, you probably don't realize that you already carry out most of the necessary steps involved in writing a research paper in your everyday life, and you probably even find them extremely useful in helping you make decisions. What kind of mileage does this car get? For example, before you bought your last car, you probably researched several different makes and manufacturers and prices. You may have also researched various cars' performance records and the different insurance costs involved. Before you took your last vacation, you may have written to the Chamber of Commerce or bought a travel guide or talked to people who had already been there in order to decide which sites and cities to visit. In that area. Would you be interested in uh, vacation there? Yeah, I'm interested in this the Alaskan trip also. Just your attention, some research that I think would increase our growth even more. And before you try to convince your boss of your need for flexible hours, you arm yourself with information from other companies which have already tried such a program. Information so that you can see some, some uh, increased productivity from other corporations that have gone to this type of a scheduling program for their employees. All of that is research. And you've been doing research all of your life. You also communicate the findings of your research to others even if it isn't necessarily in the form of a formal report or paper. OK, now let's just review this. Now, we looked at this. For example, array. you uh -huh. might tell your parents or your spouse what you learned about the car you're thinking about buying. And you'll discuss the opinions you formed on each make and model before you purchase a car. Power brakes. And the other one did, too. Power brakes on both, OK. Mm -hmm. In finalizing your travel plans, you might write to your cousin in England and tell him what you want to see when you visit. Or you might write a memo or hand in a report to your boss about the benefits of flexible work hours. Whatever form you have used to report your research findings in the past, casual conversation, a formal business letter, or a prepared speech complete with graphs and statistics. All of these methods of communication have a similarity to the research paper. That is, you identify what point you want to get across, and you provide support for that point through your research. A research paper involves gathering information and sifting through that information to arrive at a conclusion then communicating your findings in writing in the form of a written report. Some people have difficulty with a research project because of misconceptions about what is required to complete the task. Our cards are due next week, at least a minimum of 30. For example, some people believe that only one source of information is enough to arrive at a conclusion. That's a little like walking blindfolded into a room, touching one wall and trying to describe what the whole room looks like on the basis of that one wall. Feels like a, a very empty wall, um, very plain, typical type room, um, empty, very empty. Uh, maybe someone's moving in. Or they could also be maybe moving out. Um, just very, very empty. I'm sure there's nothing in this room. Of course, in a case like that, we all realize we would need to know more about the floor, the furniture, the drapes, and other features in the room before describing it. Likewise, in order to fully evaluate a subject for a research paper, we need to get as many sources of information as possible. One point of view is not enough. Just as you want several sources of information when shopping for a car, 
selecting your vacation, or trying to convince your boss, when writing a research paper, you don't want to use only one book or article because one source probably won't give you enough information on the subject you're exploring. Another common misconception is that a research report is simply a number of quotations taken from various sources and linked together. This approach produces a paper which has everybody's ideas in it but your own. Take, for example, this paragraph written about religion. In spite of all our knowledge about the world, we are not convinced that any of it has any real meaning. Besides, religion has no value for people who are starving. If you think about it, religion is nothing but a drug. As Jonathan Swift said, we have just enough religion to make us hate, but not enough to make us love one another. While there may be many thought-provoking ideas in here, right now it is nothing more than a string of ideas taken from famous quotes. Anyone reading this would be hard-pressed to make any sense of these thoughts when they are randomly lumped together like this. If you look at the essay closely, you can see there are four separate and very different ideas presented here. Because each was said by a different person, the tone and focus of each sentence is different. And there is no attempt to put all these different ideas together so they flow from one thought to the next. Therefore, the essay, if you could call it that, is meaningless. While a good research paper might contain some of these quotes and ideas, the author must present his or her own commentary along with the quotes. The writer should provide an explanation or analysis of each quote used so we can understand how each of these ideas relates to the author's own findings on religion. Without a writer's overview of the subject, the paper resembles a patchwork quilt with no thread to hold it together and no recognizable pattern in all these mismatched pieces of fabric. How then do you go about writing a good research paper? There is actually a very simple, straightforward formula you can use to organize your thoughts and write effectively. These are the steps we will follow during this course. Selecting a subject, narrowing that subject to a more focused topic, preparing a works cited page or a list of sources to map out what information is available on the subject, stating the objective of the paper in the form of a thesis, taking notes as you read through the research, developing a working outline, composing a first draft, revising and editing the draft, writing the final paper. We will cover all of these steps in this course. We will also learn ways to fine tune each of these steps as well as methods for effective writing and ways to avoid common writing problems. In addition, we'll discuss writing specific kinds of research papers for various fields, such as science, humanities, the social sciences, and literature. Let's begin with step one, selecting a subject. I don't know what I'm gonna do for my report. What do you think you're gonna do? Well, I'm gonna do mine on the Chinese Revolution. Why don't you just do something you're interested in? Weightlifting? There's not that much on it. I think I'll stick to nature. Whether you can choose the topic yourself or are asked to narrow down a given topic, your best bet is to select a subject you are interested in, such as a hobby or a career-related topic. If you enjoy sports, you might see the assignment as an opportunity to research the pros and cons of athletes using steroids. Or if you want to become a physical therapist, you may want to research recent developments in exercise equipment and how these machines can benefit people with handicaps. Now 
The choice of a subject should also be guided by the resources available to you, as well as the amount of time given for the assignment. If you choose a somewhat obscure topic like Brazilian ornamental plants, there may not be a sufficient number of books and articles in the library to write a paper on that subject. To complete such an assignment, you would probably need to write to Brazil's Department of Agriculture for information. If you're only given three weeks for the assignment, you obviously wouldn't have enough time, and you should therefore choose a different subject. I do want you to be sure to use a minimum of three sources. You may choose periodicals from the period in which your particular subject is active. You may choose newspapers. And I specifically want you to look at Time magazine. In most that cases, when you are assigned a research paper, you are given a general subject, and it is left up to you to decide which aspect of that subject you will investigate. Perhaps there's someone you admire in the field of sports perhaps in medicine or government. You choose the person you wish to use and then do all the research necessary to be able to present a Suppose, for example, you are asked to profile someone who has had a significant effect on society in the past 50 years. There are hundreds of possibilities. Political figures, such as Kennedy or Nixon or Oliver North. Trendsetters, such as Andy Warhol or Gloria Steinem. Or even sports figures who made history. Here again, the best starting place is with your own interests. Go for main engine start, seven, six, start, three, two, one, zero, and liftoff, liftoff. Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower. Roger roll, Discovery. If you're interested in flying, you may want to profile Chuck Yeager or a famous astronaut. If you want to become a reporter or newscaster, you might look into a favorite news anchor and the effect she has had on the news. Bloodied and often scared for life, battered women of frightened crowds screaming for help. Today, county leaders revealed a startling rise in the problem. Sue Yanello shows how the community is pulling together to help. Donna's horror story with her boyfriend has become all too familiar. Again, practical considerations are necessary in choosing your topic. There are hundreds of resource materials available on any of the persons just mentioned, and any one of them would be a good choice for such an assignment. But say you're a movie buff, and for this assignment, you decide you want to make a case that the person who wrote The Graduate had a significant effect on society. At the library, you find several reviews and articles about the movie when it was first released. But in all those articles, the author is not mentioned. To research the topic more thoroughly, you begin with the most current index and go backwards in time until the last possible date something could have been written on the subject, which in this case is the year the movie was released. As you search through the Reader's Guide to Periodical Literature, you find only one article about the man who wrote The Graduate. The article tells how bad times have befallen the man, and he is now unable to make ends meet. Interesting as this is, the movie author's financial problems have little or nothing to do with the effect his movie once had on society. So you are left with a topic that doesn't have many resource materials available. About the only way you could complete this assignment effectively would be to interview the author personally, which is not practical. During your reading, you do find numerous articles about Dustin Hoffman, the star of the movie. You start to think about the other movies Dustin Hoffman has made, such as Rain Man and Little Big Man, which have also brought about important changes in our society. You may decide then that writing about Dustin Hoffman is a more realistic possibility. Now you have a topic you are interested in, and you are assured of finding plenty of information on that subject. However, you may also have too much information to write the paper effectively. 
as you can see, we have people from all walks of life. We have people from... If the, the assigned field, length of the paper is 600 school, words, you, you can't write about all of Dustin Hoffman's movies and the effects on society, but the same topic could suit a longer assignment of, say, 1,500 to 2,000 words very well. So while the topic should be of interest to the writer, there also needs to be sufficient background information available on the subject, and it needs to realistically fit the length of the assignment. This brings us to step two, narrowing the subject so it is focused. Suppose you are given the following assignment. Write a 600-word paper on some positive aspect of your community and compare that to what's available in other communities. Offhand, you may be able to come up with a number of things you like about your town. The climate, the restaurants, the water sports available in the area. These are all positive aspects, but not one of these topics readily lends itself to a research paper of the assigned length. So where can you go for ideas? Since the assignment is about some aspect of your community, a good place to start is with your own local newspaper. You can scan the pages containing local news, looking for those items which are both interesting to you and relevant to your assignment. Here are the headlines you see in the newspaper which relate to your town. Financial dispute over new jail. House panel supports youth deer hunts. And seminar offers medical training without risks. The last headline triggers an idea. Since you are interested in a possible career in medical technology, you decide to research some kind of medical service available in your city. Now you refer back to your assignment. Compare some positive aspect of your community to that in other communities. Is there some medical service that is particularly good or that is well thought of? To help you decide, you go to the library to search through more material. Again and again, you read about accidents in the local news, car accidents, shootings, medical emergencies. You decide that emergency room treatment is an interesting topic to explore and a good example of a positive community service. But there are more than 15 hospitals in your city. To write about all of them would be too much for a 600-word paper. The topic is still too general. You need to narrow your focus. Reading further, you notice that in almost every case, Accident victims and other medical emergencies have been taken to Central Hospital, to the Trauma One Center. Exactly what is this Trauma One Center, you wonder? Is the Trauma One Center a part of a hospital? How are these centers different from hospital emergency rooms? When did the Trauma One unit get started? Are trauma centers costly to operate? Do they have special facilities for children and adolescents? What do they do when they treat accident victims who cannot pay? All of these questions are good ones, but it's easy to get sidetracked and come up with too many questions to explore, or to come up with questions that are too general, too narrow, or that may be biased. You need to generate questions that will control your topic, and then select one angle one aspect of emergency care to focus on. Excuse me. Hold on for a sec. How are you? Fine, how are you? I was looking up here in the trauma unit tonight. In order to narrow the focus of your topic, you consult a reference librarian. The librarian suggests that you check in Newsbank and the Reader's Guide for references to trauma centers nationwide. He also suggests the indexes of local magazines for information about the Trauma One Center at Central Hospital. I've got a cabinet along the side wall over there. Okay, great. Shall I show you to you? Yeah. Okay, please. let's go. Thanks. When you look up trauma centers nationwide, you find several general articles about how trauma centers got started and how they operate. But you find nothing mentioned about the one in your town. However, when you look through the index of a local monthly magazine, you find an article about emergency rooms. And among the emergency rooms profiled is Trauma One. After reading the article, you may well decide you have enough information for the Trauma One Center to be the focus of your paper. However, you could be making your decision prematurely. While the process for narrowing the topic was correct, 
The decision to go with that particular subject based on only one available article will definitely present problems for you later on. Remember what we said earlier about needing to have several sources of information to draw from when researching a topic. Now, this may seem like a professor's picky way to get you to do more work, but it is actually quite an important process. Consider again the example of the last car you bought. Can we see the back seat to see how much leg room it has? No doubt you did not go out and buy the first car you saw. You might have consulted sources such as Consumer Reports or the Blue Book to determine which cars had the best performance and repair records for the best price. You may have talked to other people who already owned the kind of car you were interested in to see how they liked it and what problems they encountered with the car. And before you actually made your purchase, you undoubtedly took the car for a test drive. How you doing, Bob? I'm fine. Hey, what can we help you with today? I'm just Likewise, if you are purchasing a television set, you might first visit several stores to comparison shop. Then you might read newspaper ads for sales and talk to a variety of people before making your final decision. In short, try to get as much information as you possibly can in order to make your decision. It is much the same with a research paper. Before you begin writing, gather as much information on the topic as you can. This way, when you form opinions on the subject, your impressions will be based on accurate data. Get as complete a picture as possible before you start writing. What other kinds of resources can you draw from to learn more about Trauma 1? Well, first of all, there were the articles you looked up about emergency centers around the country. By reading what facilities exist elsewhere, you can get a better idea of how the Trauma 1 Center in your town compares to those in other cities. How does Trauma 1 stack up? Does Trauma 1 have the same kinds of equipment as other units? Are they as well staffed? Do they handle as large a patient load? Are the qualifications of their staff comparable? Can they respond to any emergency or only specialized kinds? Is their response time quick enough? Notice the kinds of questions you need to ask in order to help you narrow your focus. Who? What? Where? When? Why? And how? Who works there? What are they doing and what kind of equipment do they have? Where are other centers? How do they compare? It is important in narrowing your topic to ask yourself these questions. To get answers to these questions, go back to the articles you found. After reading the articles on trauma centers in other cities, you determine that you have a pretty good idea about the services those centers offer. However, you realize you can't compare your center to the others because the short profile you read didn't provide any background material on the center in your city. Yes, can you help me? I'm doing some research on trauma centers. So you decide to call Central Hospital to find out more. The head of public relations offers to send brochures and press releases on the Trauma One Center. He also says he has a videotape about the facility which you can view. He invites you to come over to the center to watch the tape. Then you can see the facility firsthand and talk to the staff. Now you have all the necessary resources to write a solid research paper on Trauma One and how it compares to those in other cities you finally have a workable subject in which you have a personal interest. You have determined that there is adequate supporting material available, and you can tailor the subject to meet the assigned length. As you can see from this process of selecting a topic and narrowing it down, a preliminary search of the available books, articles, pamphlets, videotapes, and resource persons to interview is vital to getting a research paper started correctly. Let's briefly review what we've covered. When selecting a subject, try to select a topic that, one, is of strong interest to you. Two, pick a topic that is researchable based on available resources. And three, make sure it is suitable for the length of your assignment. When narrowing your subject, remember to scan the resources. 
generate questions to explore, and then focus on a particular question only after reviewing available resources. Throughout the process of gathering information, always be prepared to be flexible about your choice of topic. You may get several weeks into the effort and realize that you had less than you thought to work with. Or you may find that the subject you've chosen is too vast or too complicated or too boring. The process of selecting and narrowing a topic should be an ongoing one, subject to revision or alteration at any step of the way. If you remain open to this possibility, you will avoid getting trapped with an unmanageable task, and it will make the research process a whole lot easier.